If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. And of course, be sure to give the video a like, as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacists hate that. Now, that said... As black people, too many of us have been trying to look for friends in places where we simply do not have any. And of course, this has made us susceptible to all manner of deception by the white media. They come to you and tell you that people like Bill Maher are your friends. And why is Bill Maher your friend? Because Bill Maher likes to smoke weed when he hangs out with his black flunkies, I mean friends. And of course, he's been known to lay up with a couple of hood rats. So, who knows more about the black experience than Bill Maher, why, that practically makes him a black man now, doesn't it? Bill Maher has spent the better part of 25 years or so making all kinds of jokes incorporating little digs at black people. You can tell that he's still butthurt about getting checked by Ice Cube that one time. But this is who the white media would like for you to be conned and fooled and bamboozled into thinking this is supposed to be some black ally. And this is the reason why we tell you that whole ally line that they keep trying to feed to you. Don't you swallow it. As more and more pressure is put on white supremacy by the black grassroots, you're finding that more and more of your white liberal pals in particular are showing their true colors. See, it's not just the white right that depends on white supremacy to hand them every crumb of their daily bread. Your white leftists, so-called leftists, like Bill Maher, they depend on the exact same system of goodies, giveaways, and guarantees to feed them too. And let's be bluntly honest, pun intended, were it not for white supremacy, Bill Maher would simply be some stoner, washed-up, wannabe comedian, a relic of the 1990s. That's what the hell he would be. In fact, he wouldn't have made it that far. He would have washed out in the 1980s right alongside Pauly Shore. But he also stands as proof that no matter how much these so-called white leftists try to pretend as if they're somehow different than the white right, when enough sufficient pressure gets put on white supremacy, when it seems as if black folks are about to start forcing some changes onto the system, well, those white leftists start talking exactly like the white right. Why they can't find a conservative, the more crazy, the more outrageous, the better, to pal around with. Whenever Ann Coulter scribbles one of her moronic little books, Bill Maher can always be counted on to invite her onto the show to go ahead and pimp it to people. And of course, he's been getting just so much more cozy with Megan Kelly, of all people. I don't know, maybe as far as he's concerned, he thinks that he might have a shot at getting her in the sack. Bill Maher smokes so much weed, he ain't got but a handful of brain cells left. And they were barely working to begin with, so that's about the level of his mentality. But you see a whole bunch of these people who had previously been trying to tell you that they were left-wingers. You see them deciding that they're going to show their true colors, and it always comes down to black people. When it comes down to the issue of black people, that's when these white leftists, as soon as they see, oh, there's about to be some actual change made, it's not just going to be us out here pretending to give phony sympathy to the plight of the Negro. Oh my God, you mean things are going to change? Um, on second thought, next thing you know, they convert into instant Republicans. They become instant conservatives. Now, there's a number of examples of white leftists who have gotten hyper-triggered because of the issue of black people calling out white supremacy. Just the fact that white supremacy has now been put front and center. It's being called out for what it is. No more hiding behind racism. We're calling out white supremacy. Well, you got a whole bunch of white leftists who have just been triggered beyond all belief. Many of them who have decided, oh, we've got to call this out. Even when you have mild milk toast work like that book, White Fragility, just the very fact that somebody put out a book with that title, that just makes so many white folks flip off their doggone rockers, and that's how you know it hit the target. Granted, that was about as innocuous and, truth be told, just velvet glove. I actually um, read a few chapters from that book. It, folks, that Robin, whatever her name is, she doesn't go in. 
She just doesn't. Basically, what she does is she gives a, well, you know, white people have some insecurities rooted in race. And that's basically about as far as she goes with it. Oh, if only white people would learn to embrace their Negroes, they could put aside their insecurities. That's basically what her book says. And it, it basically what it says in summary. But the fact of the title, the title alone just triggers so many white folks. And the reason why is it tells them some unpleasant truths that a lot of them would prefer not to hear. They want the comforting confines of Fox News or Bill Maher in a pinch. That book, White Fragility, simply because of its very title, you've had a number of white leftists who have called themselves taking pot shots at it and trying to discount and discredit it because the title alone makes them feel insecure. But the point is, you didn't have to wait until now to see how this facade of white leftists were not really on black people's side to begin with. You didn't have to wait until now. It's just a matter of you simply accept the reality as it is, as opposed to trying to constantly campaign and be on the lookout for some quote-unquote ally you wouldn't set yourself up for this kind of disappointment. Now, to get back to Bill Maher, as I posted for you on Twitter, he had Megyn Kelly on his little side show last week, and apparently Bill Maher got triggered because he heard about some of the things that the New York education system was recommending be put into their curriculum. Some of the things that he heard were going on in some of the classrooms when it came to the discussion, not of race per se, but of white America of the dominant society. When it comes time to talk about white people, the New York schools decided, hey, there were some things that they were going to ask that they were going to be asking some questions of the students about. And apparently, Bill Maher just lost his mind, or rather, what passes for it. Okay, so I want to talk to you about the schools because I really just wanted you back here because I read this, that you took your kids out of the school in New York, and I have been hearing very much the same thing from many parents, you know. Um, parents confide in me, I guess, because I don't have kids. It usually starts with, you're so lucky you don't have kids. (laughs) And then I (laughs) hear about their problems. But just tell us why, basically, you did this. Yeah. Well, we loved our schools. Uh, We were in the New York City private school system. Our boys went to an all-boys school and our daughter to an all-girls school. Our teachers loved the students and the faculty and the parents. And they were definitely leftists, you know, I mean, we're more center right, but that was fine. You know, my my whole family are Democrats. It wasn't like I was bothered by the fact that they leaned a bit left. First of all, I do find it comforting to hear that Bill Maher doesn't have any children. I think we can all agree that it's better that his clearly defective genes not pollute the collective gene pool any further. But when Megyn Kelly claims that she and her family are center right, let me tell you something. The United States is the most right-wing country on the face of the earth. What qualifies as so-called center politics in the United States is considered to be the right wing everywhere else. It's part of the reason why the United States ain't got national health care and all the rest of it. The kind of stuff the United States does is considered to be right wing politics. And what they call just the right in this country is considered to be the far right. So that's the first little bit of absurdity that needs to be called out. Center right indeed. Compared to the rest of the world, the United States is basically to the freaking right of Richard Nixon. But also, the idea that she claims that she's center-right, this is a woman who's talked about Santa Claus is definitely white, and claiming that blackface is okay so long as you're doing it during Halloween. This is who Megyn Kelly is. This is what she considers to be center-right. This is a center-right position, don't you know? But Bill Maher was cool with that. Finally, Bill Maher gets to what it was that he really wanted to talk about. Apparently, the issue that he had with a number of curriculum points that he claimed were being taught to children in school, like, for instance... But you uh, talked about this letter that the school put out. So this is on the race issue. Can I read some of the things that are from this letter? Unless people think I'm losing my mind. There's a killer cop sitting in every school where white children learn. Well, I guess that cinches it. If Bill Maher expresses skepticism about it, that means it must be a hoax. Thank God, because I was hearing some reports about police slamming black children, especially black girls, onto the floor and onto the concrete, knocking them unconscious. But, you know, you've got America's favorite pothead, washed up comedian who claims that apparently this is all hyperbole. So obviously there's nothing to it. Thank God. What a relief. Because for a little while I was getting a little worried there. 
But not to worry, we've got Bill Mighty Whitey Marr on the case, so I'm sure that everything's under complete control, nothing to worry about here. I'm tired of white people reveling in their state-sanctioned depravity, snuffing out black life with no consequences. There is racist problems in this country, but this is hyperbole. Mm -hmm. You got Bill Maher scoffing at the idea of white people snuffing out black lives with impunity. I pointed out to you how the LAPD got caught passing around a so-called valentine in which they mocked the suffocation murder of George Floyd. The Aurora, Colorado police murdered Elijah McClain. And then afterwards, one of the bastards who murdered him decided to take a little photograph reenacting the murder along with a couple of his fellow thugs in blue. But apparently Bill Maher thinks that these white killers, that they're not reveling in being able to murder black people with impunity. By the way, none of the bastards who murdered him, they've not been charged and they're not going to be. You want to know why? Because they have people like Bill Maher who are fighting to run interference for him. But hey, we must be making too much of it. This is obviously hyperbole because the maggot infested pothead on HBO said so. Go reform white kids. Go reform white kids. Now, keep in mind, Bill Maher doesn't even have any children. Why in the world would he be getting worked up about this at all? Because for Bill Maher, this is about race. We show you chapter and verse how you got high schools, middle schools, colleges, where you got these white children who are engaging in all sorts of manner of racist displays, everything from throwing around the N-word, threatening black classmates, the running around in blackface, the whole nine yards seems on an almost weekly basis, we get treated to another example of these white teenagers and even preteens who are engaged in this kind of behavior, and yet Bill Maher, he can't possibly believe that somebody would say somebody needs to control all of these white teenagers and preteens' racist behavior. He can't believe that somebody would insinuate that they're doing anything wrong, because after all, apparently Bill Maher hasn't heard about all the school shootings, or the very least, I guess he's so busy, so deep in a pot-induced fog that he can't be bothered to tear his eyes away from the bong that he's got his lips wrapped around, permanently super glued to, so that he can see who's carrying out these school shootings. So apparently that doesn't concern him, but then again, what else do you expect from a half-wit relic from the 1980s? You know, I, it bothers me so much that I have to be on this side of this issue. Yeah. Because I've always been a civil rights advocate. Yep. You know, and, and, and don't make me Tucker Carlson. <laughs> You're the fucking nuts. This is insane. Yep. I got a particular chuckle out of this moron claiming that it bothers me that I have to be on this side of the issue. I mean, I don't want to be Tucker Carlson. Well, hey, Bill, if the shoe fits, damn it, we're going to make you wear it. And his little gaff about, I've always been in favor of civil rights. The hell he has. Bill Maher ain't been in favor of civil rights. Damn sure not in favor of rights for black people. The only thing Bill Maher is in favor of is pot legalization. He is a marijuana advocate. That's what what he is. But to him, that's civil rights. Why? Well, I've got some black friends who I get high with. Why? Snoop Dogg, all he talks about is getting high. All these rappers they talk about is getting high. That's to him, that is civil rights because he associates marijuana usage with black people because he sees black people as a monolith. And as he sees it, he has a special dispensation to take a number of liberties when it comes to talking about black people, because after all, he, some of his best pot smoking buddies are black. And Bill Maher, he's no stranger to sleeping with black women. Why would he be a racist if he slept with black women? You know, a bunch of thoughts and chicken heads like Kareen Steffens. Why, clearly this man cannot be racist at all, because obviously if he were a racist, he would never sleep with black women because Thomas Jefferson didn't sleep with black women and Strom Thurmond didn't sleep with black women either, right? Right? See, I know there's a lot of y'all out there who probably engage in some unseemly behavior, shall we say. You see, there's a reason why Bill Maher associates marijuana use with black folks, because there's some, always some Negroes who engage in that kind of behavior, and they don't mind having somebody to smoke weed with. Why? Why should you possibly kill brain cells, not to mention do other harm to yourself physically and chemically? Why would you want to do that alone? 
You, and you apparently, uh, I guess that there's no real damage that's done to you whenever you're taking in all sorts of psychoactive drugs, except for the fact that you don't seem to care that you're getting high right alongside some white supremacist who will make excuses for your child being hurt or even killed by some thug with a badge in school, or will otherwise tell you that you're engaging in hyperbole. That It's hyperbolic for you to say that the white supremacists are reveling in the murders of black people. That's just hyperbole. He'll make excuses for you or your children being killed, but hey, why should that get in the way of you having a get high buddy, right? Now, of course, whenever it comes time for the white supremacist who's been caught out to try to defend their bigotry, they always have some black friend who they cite. Notice how these scumbags never stand on their own two feet when it comes time to tell their racist lies. When it comes time to defend white supremacy, they can't just stand on their own two hooved feet and do it themselves. Instead, they always got to have some black friend who they quote. And Megan Kelly decides that her rhetorical crash dummy of choice would be none other than Cole. Coleman Hughes Cruz. You remember that clown, don't you? And it is not that all the black people in our school or other schools are in favor of this kind of talk. My friend Coleman Hughes, who's 24, he's a liberal, he's yeah, a Biden him, voter, sure. you know Coleman. He's been speaking out about mm. this as a black man saying, how dare you presume to know how I feel to try to, I mean, it's pejorative to him. Coleman Cruz. He was the rather effeminate individual who decided that he was going to go to Capitol Hill and argue against reparations. You remember that clown? He's Puerto Rican. He ain't got a drop of American slave blood in him. Nobody in his family tree can trace their lineage back to the killing fields of the American South. This clown, he's comes from freaking Puerto Rico. What the hell is he doing even being allowed to speak on this? It's kind of like asking what the hell is Bill Maher doing being allowed to speak on these issues. But that's how it works. And by the way, Coleman Hughes, that little video of him running around in the subway in his underwear, he has since deleted it. Can't imagine why. But this is who Megan Kelly points to and claims that he's a left winger. No, he's not. This guy is nothing more than an LGBT anti-black advocate. That's all that Coleman Cruz is. And we're going to call him by his right name. It ain't no Coleman Hughes. It's Coleman Cruz. That's his freaking name. So this clown, who is nothing more than an antagonist against the black community, he ain't no doggone, he is no friend of the black community, and that's the reason why Megan Kelly feels confident spouting gibberish from this guy. But here's the thing. White supremacists like Megyn Kelly and Bill Maher always like to point to their convenient black friend who they never quote at any other time on any other issue. You never heard Megyn Kelly talk about Coleman Cruz before, and you better believe she ain't going to be talking about this idiot's little pearls of wisdom when it comes to any other issue. You think she's going to talk about him when it comes to education? You think she's going to talk about him when it comes to the economy or trade with China or climate change or any other issue? Hell no. They only cite their black friends when it's something that agrees with what they already believe. Other than that, they don't quote their convenient black friend at all. It's kind of like that idiot Thomas Sowell. He calls himself an economist. Nobody else does. The only time that you ever hear his name is when it's in relation to him saying, well, black people, there's no racism in America and pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. And I got white friends over here who pay me very well. So that means that everything's hunky dory. That's what Thomas Sowell does. But his white buddies who try to claim he's an economist, they never, ever cite him or his so-called work. When it comes time to talk about the economy, they always cite some white economist. They never cite Thomas Sowell. Only time they ever mention him is whenever it's time to have some convenient Negro who's going to parrot and repeat whatever the line is from the white supremacist in particular who's talking. And the same thing goes for Coleman Cruz. Megyn Kelly don't give a damn about Coleman Cruz. That's fine. Nobody else does either. But the fact that she brings him up, yeah, I guess your one little convenient Puerto Rican friend, I guess that what he, his empty, baseless denials... I guess that carries a hell of a lot more weight than the tens of millions of black people who are speaking, right? Well, under white supremacy, that's exactly what Megyn Kelly's banking on. Why I'm white, I say so. If I've said something, then that negates no matter how many niggers you've got saying thus and so. That's the game. Oh, what I'm saying can't possibly be racist. After all, I got my convenient Negro friend over here who I'm quoting from. 
And you notice how Bill Maher chimed right in there and said, yeah, we've had him on our show. So this is the class and caliber of person that Bill Maher likes to have on. This is the kind of black person that Bill Maher feels comfortable with. But it was in this segment, though, that Megyn Kelly comes out and says black people. Now, this whole curriculum wasn't supposed to be in regards to black versus white. It was just basically talking about white privilege, etc., etc. And yet she immediately linked her umbrage to black people. Oh, well, this is a this is black people inflicting this on us. This is a black thing. That's what this, what's going on here. It's black people behind this. She was pointing out exactly who it is that she sees as being the cause of her sorrows. And Bill Maher is right in there with them. Oh, no, this ain't about Hispanics. This ain't about Asians. This ain't about Indians. This is about black people. That's who this is all about. This is the reason why he had her on the show. This is who they're objecting to. This is who all of this phony outrage on their part is actually pointed at. It's pointed at us. They all draw from the same well. They're all operating out of the same playbook and for the same purpose. Now, of course, the real reason that Megyn Kelly and Bill Maher have got their noses bent all out of joint is because of the fact that we all understand that white supremacy is taught in every arena of American society, but the main place where it reaches its sharpest expression is in the home. This stuff gets taught and reinforced in the home. That's how you can have white children who have no problem with their black peers up until about the third or fourth grade. Yeah, when their parents start making sure, okay, kid, you ain't even out of elementary school yet, but we got to make sure you understand your place in the society and that nigger's place over there. As Neely Fuller said, you better believe by the time they're 11 or 12, they understand white supremacy full well. They better understand it if they intend to perpetuate it, if they intend to to continue to enjoy the benefits the white supremacy is able to just hand to them, they better understand that there's a system in place and they better understand that it benefits them so that they don't start working against it. So yeah, that's exactly what's going on here. For God's sake, Generation X in particular was supposed to be the post-civil rights generation. The They were supposed to be the first generation of Americans born in the post-civil rights era. So all that stuff that was going on in the 60s, the Gen Xers were supposed to be the living embodiment of how America had changed, but it didn't take Gen Xers long to figure out that what we were seeing the white media tell us on television about race, what we were being taught in the home about race, and what we were hearing the pork chop pastor talk about race was very different than what our white peers were being taught. And you see it continuing. All of these school shootings that have taken place the last 25 years, the vast majority of them have been carried out by people, by white males with white supremacist leanings, Klebold and Harris. Their original intent was to go after black students, but the thing is, the town that they were in has practically no black people. Nicholas Cruz, we told you about him. Elliot Rogers told you about him. So you got individuals who are not just Gen Xers, but you also got millennials like Richard Spencer. You also got individuals like Dylan Roof, among others. So this is not just something that was an aberration with Generation X. Obviously, obviously, what the white media and white politicians and white academics have been claiming, especially right wing mouthpieces like Megyn Kelly have been claiming that has been going on in white homes is exactly the opposite of what clearly has been going on. They've been claiming that, oh, we raise our kids to be colorblind. This is and next thing you know, we get a nonstop string of racist behavior coming from these children. So obviously someone's teaching them that and they didn't freaking learn it from Sesame Street. This stuff is being taught in the home and is being taught to them as young children. So that's the problem that Megyn Kelly and Bill Maher have. They understand that they're being told, hey, we're on to you. And if you're going to be sitting here doing this programming, who knows? Maybe somebody will use the schools to do some counter programming. Imagine that. I mean, this is really damaging. And as you get older, what the studies show is these sort of implicit biased ed- education uh, efforts bring out racism. Now, of course, I got a kick out of Megyn Kelly trying to pretend to be some sort of armchair academic saying that what the studies have shown is that when kids are learning this implicit bias education, it actually brings out racism. Well, that's two lies for the price of one. First lie happens to be talking about what the studies prove. 
there have not been any actual, credible, true studies regarding any effects from so-called implicit bias education and critical race theory training in schools and such because it hasn't been done in enough schools or long enough for there to be any actual studies. They only just started doing it. How the hell can there be any sort of studies that would even pass the slightest actual academic rigor? What the hell is she babbling about? Sounds to me as if some of these right-wing think tanks, you know, these organizations like the Manhattan Institute and the Heritage Foundation, I told you about how they were founded by a white supremacist, Joseph Coors. Sounds like these clowns get some sawed-off right-wing, quote-unquote, academic who says, I have a PhD and I claim that critical race theory, and if you tell these little white children that their racism is actually white supremacist, why, this is doing harm, don't you know, because some idiot with a PhD said so. I think it's safe to conclude, especially from a lifelong white supremacist propagandist like Megyn Kelly, that when she talks about studies, we can guess what the source of these so-called studies happen to be. We can guess who came up with the crap. These right-wingers, they happen to have a small constellation of think tanks and organizations whose job is to put out these public policy papers. Just basically a propaganda mill churning out the bile. And because the people who are telling these lies happen to have gone to Harvard or Yale or some Ivy League school in many cases, well, that means it must be legit. And they're going to use a bunch of four and five letter words. And they'll also do like Heather McDonald did in her fiction book, The War on Cops, or as I like to call it, The War That Never Was. She'll these people will claim all sorts of phony baloney stats, which they just pulled out of their behinds. They're going to engage in just masterpieces of statisticulation where they mangle the numbers until they get them to say what they want. Or they'll just lie all together and say, hey, here's what it is. And hopefully, if they just repeat it long enough, some of these simple-minded rubes will go for it. That's what she means by the studies. This is who the studies come from. And second of all, when it comes to things like critical race theory, these things are too damn new. They just showed up a, about the last year or so. So what the hell is this nonsense about? The studies show these things are too new and they haven't even been done widespread or long enough for there to be any sort of study. Now what you can have is, you can have, as Bill Maher attempted to do, you can have some right-wing little toilet like the Cato Institute. By the way, the Cato Institute had Bill Maher's buddy Tucker Carlson as a senior fellow there. So that lets you know what kind of place the Cato Institute is. You can have organizations like Reason Magazine. Reason Magazine is a libertarian rag, and I think we all know how, the, how staunchly anti-black the libertarians happen to be. David Simon, the creator of HBO's The Wire, he bragged about how for the longest time he was a libertarian, or at least he identified with the libertarians. He considered himself to be a libertarian. Now, I've told you what an anti-black bigot that scumbag is. But the point that I'm making is, when it comes to implicit bias training or education, when it comes to things like critical race theory, these things are too new, and they have not been implemented widely enough or long enough for anyone to draw any sort of conclusions, good or bad, about them. So if somebody's having racist thoughts in the back of their head, it brings it to the frontal lobe, and, and more people act on their latent racism than they otherwise would have. Keep in mind, that talking point, that asinine little bit of verbal vomit about, you know, the fact that you're talking about racism, that makes people racist. You never hear that bullcrap at any other time. You would never hear Megyn Kelly or Bill Maher claiming that talking about Islamic radicalism makes people into Islamic radicals. Why, when you're trying to teach people that radical Islam is wrong, that's what makes them. It brings out feelings of radical Islam. It makes them into radicals. If you didn't talk about it, then there wouldn't be any. Isn't that the dumb talking point that the white supremacists try? Oh, well, the, the, you gotta stop talking about racism. If you'd stop talking about it, there wouldn't be any. Well, if you stop talking about implicit bias training, why there wouldn't be any. See how that works? But of course, Megyn Kelly and all the rest of the white supremacists who tried that stupid talking point, which apparently only makes sense with them, though it does show their insecurity and their absolute feelings of being under threat when you call out white supremacy for what it is. That, now that much is clear. 
They may think that it plays elsewhere, but it really doesn't. Everybody sees how stupid it is. They would, she would have been better off saying nothing at all than saying this garbage. Now, it's only with a group of individuals who have already made up their minds that we have to defend white supremacy at all costs, where an asinine statement like that could make any sense. If somebody already has racist thoughts, talking about it will simply bring it to their frontal lobe. So what you're saying is, in one breath, that people don't become racist unless you talk about it. And then in the very next breath, she says, well, if somebody's already got racist thoughts, well, how the hell the racist thoughts get there? This is the kind of mentality that's at work here. And the white media wants you to think that Bill Maher is your friend. This is a man who tries to pride himself on pretending as if he's some sort of critical thinker. And yet the most obvious of logical fallacies flew right by him. Of course, it didn't fly by him at all. He caught it, but it's a matter of this is something that he's trying to promote and trying to push. You think about that next time you see Michael Eric Dumbass on his show. So as the pressure continues to be applied to white supremacy, what you have is you got these white liberals who are now making complete and thorough common cause. And it's not new in the case of Bill Maher, but the point is expect to see more of this because black people are the enemy in the society. White supremacy is based on a racial hierarchy with black people at the bottom. As black people begin to destabilize that hierarchy, as black people begin to move against it, They have to put an emphasis on uniting. Yeah, just because there was a coup attempt on January 6th, we need unity, don't you know? Yeah, unity indeed, and this is exactly the unity that they're talking about. We need to unify against black people. You have never seen Bill Maher do anything like this when it comes to LGBT whatever or immigration or anything else. But when it comes to race, all of a sudden your buddy Bill Maher starts talking no different than Tucker Carlson and Megyn Kelly. He has no problem having them on. He wants these people to be heard. He wants people to hear this gibberish and he starts denying reality and telling black people, oh, you just think that black children are being brutally assaulted by these white supremacist thugs with badges. You only seem to think that white people happen to be reveling in the murders of black people that they commit and that they do with impunity. You just think that's going on. You just think these black people have been killed. This is all hyperbole. Well, you're exaggerating. That's not what's happening at all. Now, of course, it's blatantly obvious that Megyn Kelly is auditioning to get her job back on Fox News. She's clearly hoping that the good old boys over at FNC are going to watch this and they'll be seeing that, hey, maybe we should pull Megyn Kelly out of mothballs. Of course, we all know that Fox News prefers their bottle blondes to be younger and they prefer that they put out. Megyn Kelly is has neither youth No, I can't think of anybody who would want her. Roger Ailes is now safely in his crypt. Bill O'Reilly is, well, God knows where. I think he's doing some insipid little podcast. And as for Tucker Carlson, well, the less said about him, the better. But Megyn Kelly, I can't even imagine Fox News giving her anything other than some token little make work job so they can claim that they've turned over a new leaf. They're trying to do that and reinvent themselves, by the way. But maybe they might do that for her, but it would be short lived. That much I if they were to offer her anything, it wouldn't be much and it wouldn't be for very long. But you can see how desperately Megan Kelly wants that. She understands that basically she's over the hill. This is her auditioning, telling the telling the white media, hey, guys, I I can see I can talk about race without being blatantly just in your face racist about it. I've, I've learned how to moderate myself. I swear I've learned how to moderate. That's what she's doing. So she's trying to see if anybody's going to offer her a job. God knows she needs one. Well, the old saying is as true as it's ever been. Adversity doesn't build character. It reveals it. And as the pressure mounts on white supremacy, Bill Maher is making it very clear, no, these were not just flukes that I've done in the past. This is exactly what I stand for. Yeah, Bill Maher, we've known that he's a white supremacist, and for the idiots out there who have been in denial or making excuses for him, well, you look a lot more stupid than you did just a few days ago, don't you? It gets harder and harder to defend all of these allies, doesn't it, when they keep mounting all this evidence against themselves? 
Because the same people who were trying to turn a blind eye to Bill Maher are the exact same idiots who made excuses for why Joe Biden didn't need to be held to account. And just like with Bill Maher, Joe Biden is also trying to solidify that center-right support. He's still out there campaigning for whatever Biden Republicans he thinks he might be able to get. So you see that there's an offensive at work here. There's a program at work here. It's not just some coincidence. You had Drew Brees, who was trending on Twitter yesterday, because apparently this scumbag might be deciding to stay in the NFL for another season. whoop de doo just what everybody asked for. But Drew Brees was the one who decided that he was going to criticize the NFL protest. As far as he was concerned, ain't nothing wrong with what the cops are doing. This bastard's been around black people for most of his adult life, certainly his pro career. It was a black city that gave him a shot at being a quarterback because didn't nobody else want his raggedy gimp behind. And what did Drew Brees do? He turned right around and he told his black teammates and he told the black city that gave him a shot at a career, a last chance shot at a career. He told them, the team I play for ain't the Saints. I'm playing for team white supremacy. That's the team that Drew Brees plays for. And the bastard had the nerve afterwards to try to pretty it up, which everybody knew was a completely, clearly insincere statement. Oh, you know, we're part of the problem. Yeah, you're damn right. We didn't need you to tell us that. But that's the game that they play. This is the reason why you got to understand all these, pe these Negroes campaigning for allies. Let me tell you something. Allies are highly overrated, okay? What you're really saying is you don't think that you got enough heft to stand on your own. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. You do. When black people decide that we are going to take to the streets or do whatever else it is required in order to make sure that our interests are promoted, everybody takes notice of that. It has disproportionate heft because of who it's coming from. There is no substitute for the moral or political legitimacy that black people, and by black people I mean specifically those of us who came out of slavery in this country, there is no substitute for the moral and political legitimacy that we represent. Black immigrants do not represent it. Asians don't represent it. Hispanics don't represent it. White women don't represent it. LGBT or any other category or demographic you want to name, they don't even come close. They don't carry the history. They do not carry the weight of the history that we bear on our shoulders. The history of the United States is very much the history of black people. How we forged a nation out of what had been a, a European exercise in invasion. How we were the ones, everything that you think of as America, every good thing that the country tries to brag about, are in fact the things that we contributed and we fought for, and that the dominant society, people like Megyn Kelly and Bill Maher, fought against. American history can be divided into two halves. The half of the country desperately doesn't want to talk about and tries to bury and pretend that it doesn't want, that it didn't exist and holds its head in shame when you, whenever you mention it. And then the stuff that we did. The stuff that we did is what they try to appropriate and pretend as if, well, you know, um, white people had to pass those laws, you know, and look how much effort it took to force you to do it. No, they don't get to take credit for the things that they had to be dragged kicking and screaming and in many cases had to fight a war just to get them to do basic stuff. I'm sick and tired of having people like Megyn Kelly and Bill Maher trying to pat themselves on the back for basic, not even, not even decency. But just for having something resembling a less egregious form of barbarism, because that's what they're doing. They haven't they haven't made it to civilization yet. They're instead wanting to be patted on the back and told how great they are simply because they lightened up on the barbarism a little bit, became a little more sophisticated with their savagery. And they want someone to congratulate them as if somehow they did some wonderful thing when in fact they are part of the problem. But all of these little feel-good exercises where they have their little get-togethers and tell themselves, oh, isn't it a shame when you have to hear that you're a white supremacist? Well, if you stop acting like one, people will stop making the accusation that these little psychological masturbation fests that they do, they're going to become much less effective at making them feel as if, oh, you know, I feel a little bit better now that we've said how ridiculous it is because this is not stopping. I know it's not going to stop because we're not going to stop. 
The end of white supremacy cannot come soon enough, and we know that white supremacy ain't going into its grave without a fight. We're banking on it. We owe white supremacy for 500 years of abuse. We've only started to put the pain on white supremacy. We've only just begun to put the screws to white supremacy. So, oh yeah, we know damn well white supremacy ain't going without a fight. Good. We owe them for 500 years of abuse, harm, murder, and mistreatment, and de deprivation of our rights and of our ability to live our lives prosperously. We owe the, we owe white supremacy for 500 years, and we will indeed make sure that debt is paid with interest. But you better be real careful about these allies. And ain't just the people like Bill Maher, the Tim Wises and others. You better be real careful about these allies that some of y'all keep wanting to try to pal around with. Because the more you talk to these guys, you find that it doesn't take very long indeed. It doesn't take much to get them to show their white supremacist credentials. Don't take them. It doesn't take much before they start talking just like any other Fox News reject. That's the point of this video essay, just to make sure that you understand that. Bill Maher is simply an idiot who has decided that he's going to be spouting this stuff openly, and he's been doing it for years. This ain't new. This is not new at all. But he's not alone. And this ain't an isolated incident. They're worried right now because the system of goodies, giveaways, and guarantees that they rely upon is being threatened, and that threat is not subsiding. They were hoping that once we get Kamala Harris in there, these Negroes will calm down, and hopefully all that black empowerment stuff will go away. It hasn't gone away. So what their understanding is, oh my God, these guys, they really are trying to put white supremacy in its grave. Damn right we are. And we know that white supremacy isn't going to go into its grave without a fight. But guess what, Bill and Megan? White supremacy is still going.